the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart, and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. O oh, Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a merciful sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities, with which I have ever offended you, and justly deserve your eternal and eternal punishment. But I am hard to for them, and sincerely repent of them, and I pray for your boundless mercy, and for the sake of the holy, innocent, and your sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. On this your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the Lord, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We continue with the intro of the Lord today. The earth is full of the steadfast love of the Lord. Hallelujah. By the word of the Lord, the heavens were made. Hallelujah. Behold, the eye of the Lord is on those who fear him, on those who hope in his steadfast love. That he may deliver his soul from death, and keep it alive in death. Our soul waits for the Lord. He is our help and our shield. The earth is full of the steadfast love of the Lord. Hallelujah. By the word of the Lord, the heavens are made. Hallelujah.
you raise up the fallen world. Grant to your faithful people rescue from the peril of everlasting death, perpetual gladness, and eternal joys. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Ezekiel chapter 34. For thus says the Lord God, Behold, I, I myself, will search for my sheep, and will seek them out. As a shepherd seeks out his flock when he is among his sheep that have been scattered, so will I seek out my sheep, and I will rescue them from all places where they have been scattered on a day of clouds and thick darkness. And I will bring them out from the peoples, and gather them from the countries, and will bring them into their own land. And I will feed them on the mountains of Israel, by the ravines, and in all the inhabited places of the country. I will feed them with good pasture. And on the mountain heights of Israel shall be their grazing land. There they shall lie down in good grazing land. And on rich pasture they shall feed on the mountains of Israel. I myself will be the shepherd of my sheep. And I myself will make them lie down, declares the Lord. I will speak the loss. And I will bring back the strength. And I will bind up the injured, and I will strengthen the weak, and the fat and the strong I will destroy. I will feed them in justice. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. The Lord was known to them in the breaking of the bread. Alleluia. I am the good shepherd, I know my own, and my own know me. Alleluia. The epistle is from 1 Peter chapter 2. For to this you have been called, because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example, so that you might follow in his steps. He committed no sin, neither was deceit found in his mouth. When he was reviled, he did not revile in return. When he suffered, he did not threaten, but continued entrusting himself to him who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body on the tree, that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. By his wounds, you have been healed. For you were strained like sheep, but now have returned to the shepherd and overseer of your souls. This is the word of the Lord. Please stand. I have other sheep 
that are not of this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. This is the gospel of the Lord. We confess together. I believe in the one God, the Father Almighty, the Maker of heaven and earth, and all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of the Father before all worlds, God of God, light is light, very God, very God, begotten not me, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the Scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead, and the light of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated while seeing our sermon hymn number 700. Um,
Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, if you couldn't already tell from the readings and the hymns, the picture that the theme sets for us today is that Jesus is our good shepherd. A shepherd cares for the sheep. That's us, human beings. But then there's also these hired shepherds who may not always do a good job of watching over and protecting the sheep. Then there's the wolf, seeking to kill and destroy the flock. And what does the good shepherd do that none of the hired hands is willing to do? None of them have protected the sheep to the point of losing their life. The hired hands run away if there is a hint that it may cause them suffering, especially Death. There's only one true good shepherd, that is Jesus Christ. All other shepherds follow in his footsteps. Today we call those who care for God's flocks under shepherds or pastors. That's what I came for you back in 2019. The Holy Spirit led you to call me, and through the prompting of the Holy Spirit, I accepted the call to be your shepherd. I lead you to green pastures and cool waters, preaching the law and the gospel to you, and faithfully administering the sacraments in your midst. I point you to Christ, the good shepherd, and all his gifts. For there's no sheep, no person who can avoid every evil attack of the devil. Temptations. Trials, crosses, suffering, that's all part of this world. It's part of this world because of our sinful nature. It's part of this world because of the attacks of the devil. And it's part of this world because of the pressure of this world itself, the worldliness of the world, just to get into sin. You remember those three, right? The devil, the world, our sinful nature. Catechism class, we call those the unholy trinity. That's what's seeking to destroy God's flock. So what do the sheep of God's flock do when they are under attack? They might scatter in fear when they're under attack, when they see the wolf coming straight for them. The weak ones then are isolated. They're cut off from the protection of the rest of the flock. And the wolf ends up feasting. That is, unless the shepherd comes to the rescue, saves the sheep from the jaws of the predator. The higher hand will more than likely not endanger his own life to save this lost sheep, but the good shepherd. The good shepherd will not only attempt to rescue the lost lamb, but will even willingly lay his life down in order to save, to save it. And right after our text ended, if you get out your Bible and you look at John chapter 10, verse 17, there the good shepherd lays down his life, but he also takes it up again. We've just been through the days of Lent, Holy Week, and now we're in the Easter season. These are the days that show us all that our Savior did for us to save us from sin and eternal death, even taking our place on the cross. Offering his life in place of the entire flock. The wolf, the devil, thought this was a good plan. Without the shepherd, the sheep would be vulnerable. They could, he could continue to feast on the flock until they were all devoured. But poor Satan, just when he thought that he had won, when he had defeated the good shepherd, he himself was defeated. He lost all his powers. Jesus removes the fangs and the claws of Satan so that he can no longer harm the flock of God. Attack as he might. Satan can do no real damage to the flock of God. The flock that hears the voice of the good shepherd and follows him safely through this valley of the shadow of death into the green pastures of the cool waters of paradise. Because they're listening to the comforting words, the voice of the Good Shepherd, the Word of God. 
Satan's still not deterred. If he can't harm the flock of God himself, he's going to send out wolves, other wolves. He's going to send out wolves in sheep's clothing to be false shepherds, but call the flock away from the good shepherd. How can that happen? Can't the sheep tell who the voice of their shepherd is? That's the problem with false teachings. If they can sound close enough to the good shepherd, they can trick some of the sheep into falling into a false security, into a trap that endangers their life. On the other hand, it's not hard at all to trick those who don't know the voice of the good shepherd very well, that don't know the word of God. It's not difficult to make something sound like it comes from the Bible. Like this one. Think in your head, you don't have to raise your hand or anything. Think in your head. This verse is in the Bible. Money is the root of all evil. True or false? False. You don't have to say anything. <laughs> because that's not actually what it says. It is in the Bible, right? You can look it up. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 10, though, says, Paul is talking to Timothy. What does the actual words say? The love of money is a root of all kinds of evil. Is there a difference in those words? Even Satan himself tried to quote the scriptures to Jesus, doing one, leaving out a word or two here or there, or misquoting it. There are other verses that are like this, that, that can be misunderstood or, or that can be mistranslated. And there are those hired hands that really just twist the scriptures into saying whatever they want, and the people are willing to hear whatever they want not reading what it actually says. That means most of the time taking the focus off of Jesus and putting it someplace else. Like on you. Oh, you're such a great example, aren't you? Right? Put yourself in the Bible. If you have faith in God, you can be like David and you can take out your delights. Right? How many preachers have preached on that? How many different churches are there in Newton itself? Not to mention the whole world. All of them are selling their own way to heaven. And selling is what literally some of them are doing. Some people think they can buy themselves or their loved ones out of hell or out of purgatory and get them into heaven. Others think that if they can do this or that, well, that will save themselves. How can you pay for your sins so that God will let you into heaven. Well, one way that people try to do this is by not emphasizing just how terrible sin is, especially original sin. Right? That you are born lost in sin, born an enemy of God. You have no power inside of yourself to save yourself. But if you do, if you have some kind of smart if you choose to do this or you choose to do that, you can choose to follow whatever shepherd you want to follow. What does the Bible say? The Bible says you are a sinner. The Bible says no sin or sinners will be allowed into heaven. So does that mean that no one can get into heaven because we're all sinners? No, you can get into heaven. You just have to atone for your own sins. You can't do that because you're a sinner. So what do you need? You need Jesus. That's why God sent Jesus into this world. To take on our flesh and to confront Satan, our enemy, directly. He cast out demons. He cured diseases which are the result of sin. He was showing the flock that he was the one. The promised one, the good shepherd. And in the end, he lays down his life for the sake of the flock. To save them from sin and death. And he took up his own life again on the third day. And he continues watching and caring for his flock. Sending other shepherds to call the lost sheep. To care and bind up their wounds. And to lead them to green pastures. 
April 18th. On this day, 500 years ago, April 18th, 1521, Martin Luther stood before Emperor Charles V at the Diet of Worms in Germany. We talked about this in, in Bible study, so if you weren't there, you missed this, and you missed the video. We're going to be watching it again though with the youth, so I guess I can invite everybody else that wants to come and watch with the youth to come and watch and go through the study again here too. But he, he only had two questions that they wanted Martin Luther to answer. One, are these your writings displayed here on the table? And yes, they were his writings. And two, do you recant? Do you take back what you have written? No. He wouldn't take any of those back. He had written faithfully about the Bible. The Bible was his authority. And so unless he had been shown from the Word of God where he was wrong, he would not recant. His conscience was captive to the Word of God. And because this was an imperial gathering, the emperor was there. They had imperial secretaries writing down every word. We have faithful testimony of what happened 500 years ago. Martin Luther would not listen to edicts from popes or emperors or councils because they lie and they can, they can err. They can be in error, but not God. His voice, his word alone is the truth. His voice for us still today is not found in the words of men, but in the scriptures alone. From that time on, then, Martin Luther was under the imperial ban. He could be killed as an outlaw without any repercussions on one killing. He wasn't killed. He lived on. He continued proclaiming God's word. Today, if you hear a shepherd telling you that you can get to heaven by your power, your decisions, run away from that false shepherd. One tells you, you get to heaven by your faith in Jesus and your love and good works. Run away from that one. Yeah. But they think that since there are so many churches, they're either all the same, or it doesn't make any difference which one you attend. But there is a big difference between the true church and the false church. False churches point the sheep to themselves, to their power, to their efforts, their love. But the true church always points only to Christ, Savior. It points to His works alone that paid for the sins of the world, that earned salvation for all. Jesus is the good shepherd. Saint thought he was just another sheep, and he tried to devour him in death. But instead, it ended up being like one of those nursery rhymes, then, where the sheep cuts open the wolf from the inside, escaping hell and all of Satan's powers, defeating him for us. Satan, the wolf, will attack you in your life. He already has, and he will continue to do so until the end. Well, you've run away from the wolves, from false shepherds, from everything, and run to the voice of the good shepherd. The one who laid down his life for yours, so that you can dwell with him eternally. Where will you go? Go to the word of God and stand there firm in faith and confidence and boldness. Amen. I may mean, the peace that passes all our human understanding, our hearts and minds through Christ Jesus, our Savior. Amen.
Let us pray for the whole Church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Shepherd of Israel, in your Son, Jesus Christ, you have sought out your sheep and gathered us into your flock. Keep us always in your fold and guard us from every wolf and snake. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O God, send faithful shepherds to care for your flock here and scattered throughout the world. Keep them devoted to you and your truth, and so turn them in dutiful service for your people. Spare us from hirelings who would serve ego, belly, or the world's doctrines. Give discerning ears to your sheep. Listen for the voice of Christ, our good shepherd. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we give thanks for your servant, Martin Luther, for whom the Christian Church was called back to the truth of the Scriptures and the comfort of the Gospel for the repentant consciences found in Christ alone. By your Holy Spirit and the conviction of the blessed Scriptures, embolden us to confess faithfully in our time and to stand unashamed on the prophetic and apostolic Scriptures in the face of all opposition or discomfort. Give wisdom and zeal to our pastors, give resolve and confidence to all Christians, and preserve and enlarge the flock that all consciences may be bound up in the life of our risen shepherd. Lord, in your mercy, Almighty God, as you have put our sins to death in Christ's body on the tree, so also bring life to our faith by his Spirit, that in your continual grace, we may bring forth the fruit of holy lives. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. eternal Lord, through the pastoral land, you have brought peace between man and God. By your gift of good government, grant peace and good days also to our citizens and between the nations of the world, that we and all our neighbors may lead quiet lives in godly content. Lord, in your mercy, Heavenly Father, by the first fruits of Christ's life from the dead, you secure forgiveness for our troubled consciences. Plus, also with temporal health and well being, those who suffer among us. Especially, we remember in our prayers Peggy Gerber and Keegan Schreiber. Grant them aid in this moment and even more so true immortal health in the world to come. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. Lord God, our shepherd, you call all fears in this valley of the shadow of death, and you prepare the holy table of your son's testament in the presence of our enemies. Grant us repentant and faithful hearts in every tribulation of besetting sin, leading us to find comfort and strength in your overflowing mercy given us here in this sacrament. Lord, in your mercy, for God, out of your fatherly goodness, you have remembered us poor, miserable sinners and given your beloved Son to be our shepherd, not only to nourish us by his word, but also to defend us from sin, death, and the devil. And us, your Holy Spirit, that even as this shepherd knows us and helps in every affliction, we may also know him, trust him, seek him, help and comfort in him, heartily obey his voice, and obtain eternal salvation. To the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
Lord be with you. Jesus Christ, the very Paschal Lamb, who was sacrificed for us and bore the sins of the world. By his dying, he has destroyed death. By his rising again, he has restored to us everlasting life. Therefore, with Mary Magdalene, Peter, and John, with all the witnesses of the resurrection, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, the law and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and sing. same way also he took the cup after supper and when he had given thanks he gave it to them and said drink of it all of you this cup is the new testament in my blood which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins this do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me the peace of the lord be with you all
Please stand. Now this true body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen and preserve you steadfast in the true faith through life everlasting. Depart in peace. Amen. Amen.
thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy, you would strengthen us through the same, in faith towards you, and in fervent love towards one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Peace.